those of you who um, who joined in with us tonight, thank you for being here. Um, thank you for being those of you who were here early, um, anxious to get the information that we want to be able to share with you. Um, so I'm Nikki Mitchell on behalf of the guidance department. Um, I welcome you to the parent webinar for the class of 2025. Um, if you've not joined the Remind as we have posted on this slide, please do uh, join to receive information. As we told students in classes today, we will do our best to update them with deadlines, um, important things that we find out, notifications of changes, and we want them to uh, get used to checking their reminds. And so if you've not done so, please do uh, sign up for the remind. Next slide. By now, uh, since your students are juniors, hopefully they know their counselors and you've seen our faces as well. Um, here's a slide to show what the uh, counseling alpha breakdown is uh, for your students. And also we like to acknowledge that during this season, both our guidance tech uh, technician, Adriana Talamantes, and Emily Stevenson, our guidance secretary, secretary, are very instrumental in a lot of the behind the scenes processes that go on, especially during our registration season when we're in classes. We would encourage students that if they have an issue or question, if they do see Ms. Stevenson, she will be able to let them know when we'll be available or she may be able to answer some of their questions when we're in and out of our offices. So to start the evening off, as I said before, we were in classes today. We were in all junior English classes today and encourage students to log on with you or encourage them to, uh, to remind you to log on so that you can know the things that we have been telling them and that we're going to continue to remind them about. Towards the end of our presentation, we'll give you an overview of the specific instructions that we've given them about selecting courses for next year. But it's a good overview for the first part of our program tonight just to remind you of things and tools that will be helpful for them as they move through the registration season and preparing for college applications and life after Claremont High School. One of the key things that we want them to do is to use their School Links account. And as it says on the slide, they can access School Links on our CHS website. They need to use their CUSD login credentials. And they're going to find lots of information on school links, such as the forms for requesting letters of recommendation, different college planning tools, links to different sites, such as signing up for the SAT and the ACT. Those are things that they will find via school links and on our school website. Next slide, please. So we want this to be a time of exploration. When students come to see us and they ask about their, their planned schedule and whether or not are these the right classes or does this look like it's going to be a good senior year schedule? So much of our answer really depends on what their plans are after graduation. And so for that reason, we encourage them to use this time to start exploring colleges. One of the best things that they can do if possible is to visit the campuses directly or virtually if, uh, if they're not able to, but so many of our college campuses have great websites and they will give virtual tours so they can get a sense of what the campus is like. But again, there are so many local schools that they can go to. So it's even if it's a school that's not completely on their radar or a school that they're not sure they're going to apply to, just getting that exposure to the campus environment can be very helpful. Um, also in school links is a to-do list and there are month by month activities that are listed uh, in school links that help them along with exploring colleges and the types of, um, of inventories or surveys that they should be taking for themselves to get a better sense of how to select colleges for their ultimate college list. Big Future is, um, is a site that we will encourage students to utilize along with school links because there are many different uh, tools there as well, just to help them start to examine what kinds of schools are going to be a good fit for them. Next slide. So if those of you online tonight attended our junior information night on January 11th, you'll know that we've got a resource. And fortunately, it's on our uh, CUSD or CHS website under the counseling page in our YouTube channel. But I would really encourage you to visit uh, our YouTube channel and view junior information night. So if you already attended, great. You can still refer to it. And if you didn't attend, please do view this because we had a breakdown um, from a panel of experts um, 
from community colleges, UC, Cal State, private schools, financial aid. So there's a wealth of information embedded in that presentation. One of the presenters was a Citrus College representative, um, and she spoke a lot about the advantages of students um, who choose to attend a community college. These are just some facts about that on uh, this slide. It's open admission, so that means that the process for being admitted is very simple. Students simply need to have a high school diploma or be 18 years of age. Um, they give priority transfer to UC and Cal State campuses when students attend a community college. So a, a large part of our public school um, university system is to cater to students who do opt to go to a community college first and transfer in. Many students are surprised to know that there are honors programs at community colleges. There are also programs or certificate programs. So if students are looking to enter the workforce, there are specific certificate training programs that exist at the community college. It's low cost and financial aid is available. And we are really fortunate to have three very local campuses, Citrus, Mount Sac, and Chafee are well within a, a very local distance from CHS. And there are 116 community colleges statewide. Next slide, please. Few more details about the community college system. Uh, students will be encouraged to apply in the spring of their senior year. So about a year from now is when they would be going through the application process for the community college. A Little bit different than the four year college timeline. Um, also their application is free and it is entirely online. And again, admission is guaranteed as long as students have a diploma or will be or are 18 years old. There are a few more statistics here on this slide about the price per unit. And so again, it is an extremely uh, great value um, as far as what you have to pay in order to get a, a quality education. And we always remind students that community college is in fact college. Sometimes when they're thinking of their senior year courses, some students will opt to water it down saying, well, I'm not going to go straight to a four-year college. I'm going to a community college first. And we always emphasize, please know that community college is college. Those are college classes. And if you are intending to be successful there, we want you to stay rigorous in your course load in your senior year. One other thing is Citrus is our partner college here at CHS. And many of our dual enrollment electives um, are courses that are actual Citrus College classes, but taught on our campus. Students can talk to Ms. Miller um, about the early decision program as she is in our college and career center. Next slide, please. These are just a sampling of some of the programs, the certificate programs at Citrus College. So students who are interested in cosmetology, the firefighting academy, nursing, you can see the local colleges that offer specialties in those fields. Next slide. Okay, so we're gonna shift a little bit and talk briefly about four-year colleges and universities. There are more than 2,500 uh, four-year colleges in the United States. And so again, it can feel overwhelming to a junior um, trying to decide what's going to be the best fit for me. There are so many schools. So again, we want students to use the search engines that we provide so they can start finding fit because they're going to discover there's not just one good fit school. There are a lot of them and they're gonna hopefully have good choices if they do their research. So again, when students are thinking about schools, they should consider factors um, such as the location, where do they want to live for four to five years, the size of the school, um, the majors that are offered, whether it's a public school or a private school, there are some differences in terms of how schools are structured, whether it's a semester-based or a quarter-based system. Some students uh, will thrive more where it is a faster pace, and some students really need to have that semester system feel much like high school. Next slide, please. So when we talk to them about four-year colleges and universities, we lump them into two categories just in general. There are public schools and there are private schools. So in the state of California, our public universities are the UC system, the University of California, as well as the Cal State system or the CSUs. Out-of-state schools, um, can also have, do also have public institutions. So when you're looking at University of Texas, University of Georgia, so they can go to a state school in a variety of states in the country. Um, we also talk to them about the Western Undergraduate Exchange, or we often call that the WUI. So when they're looking at colleges, they may wanna find out if it's a school that falls under that WUI umbrella. Those are schools that do uh, treat out-of-state students 
like in-state residents and oftentimes the tuition um, can be much cheaper um, even though it's a school that's not uh, in California. When we're talking to them about private colleges, in general, they should know that private colleges can be religious or secular, and of course, they're in-state and out-of-state. Again, Claremont High School students are very, very fortunate that they have a wealth of private universities in their own backyard. Our students could walk to some of the most um, revered private institutions um, with our Claremont colleges just right down the street. But again, it's a good idea for them to start learning about the differences and the types of schools. And again, visiting them just to know what the feel is like and what might be a good institutional fit for them. Next slide, please. So this slide explains the A through G completion um, requirements or the, the differences between the two uh, public schools, um, the UCs and the Cal State. So as I mentioned before, these are our two public university systems in the state of California. We are very, very fortunate in that we have nine UC campuses and 23 Cal State campuses. So throughout the entire state of California, a student can find a very, very good public school education. This is just a brief comparison of the two campus types. Um, often students will think of the UCs and they tend to be research-based institutions. Uh, Cal States are quite often more hands-on practical um, skills-based institutions. But again, amongst those different schools, there are lots of differences. So the feeling that you get when you go to San Diego State might be different than the feeling that you get if you're at Humboldt or the feeling that you get if you're at our local Cal Poly Pomona. So again, it's wise for students to take advantage of our local schools and visit just to get a sense of how those campuses differ and take structured tours when possible so that they can ask questions of, um, of the, the team of people at those institutions that can answer them directly. Next slide, please. So we would encourage students as they're exploring college colleges to take advantage of all the different opportunities that they can. Again, visiting schools, taking advantage of local college fairs that take place in the spring. We host a college fair in the fall. CHS um, is one of the few high schools that actually has its own college fair that happens every October. And so please encourage your students, even though they'll be seniors at that time, it's a good idea for them to, again, continue to explore schools that will uh, come on our campus to talk to them. Um, consider out of state schools um, and in state schools. I've already mentioned some of these features uh, that are on this slide. Um, one thing I'll point out is it's been advertised on our, um, on our uh, Wolf, uh, losing my train of thought, Wolf, uh, <laughs> not Wolf Pack, our news program. Um, every day that the students who are interested can actually uh, attend the Black College Expo in Los Angeles this Saturday. And so again, that is a huge college fair um, and it brings a lot of representatives from historically Black colleges and universities to California in a college fair setting. So uh, HBCUs along with other um, Cal State's UCs and private schools are at events such as that. So again, we really encourage this to be a time of exploration. So by the, by the fall of senior year, students are feeling more confident about their college list. All right, a little more information about private colleges because we refer to the A through G requirements and we are encouraging all of our rising seniors to meet those A through G requirements because that's a criteria that's used by our public school system. So the UC and the Cal State requires a certain number of courses and a certain grades in those courses uh, to be admissible. Many private colleges will also adhere to something very similar to that. And so if a student is meeting their A through G requirements, they are most likely meeting the requirements or possibly exceeding the re requirements for a lot of private schools as well. However, we encourage students to please research. They can go on that school's website to find out specifically what is that private college's uh, admission requirement if it differs from the A through G. And like I said, meeting um, our A through G requirements for the state of California quite often will meet or exceed the requirements for private schools. And if there's ever any question, we encourage students to contact the admissions offices directly. Some students feel that, well, I don't know if I can ask them any questions. I'm not a student there. Well, you're not a student there, but you want to be a student there. And they welcome those questions. So please encourage them to start outreaching. Next slide, please. 
So as a future college applicant, we want to tell our rising seniors that they should start preparing themselves by knowing the supplemental criteria that institutions will look for. So to be admissible for many private schools, students will often need essays or recommendations. Now, our public schools don't require recommendations. So Cal States and UCs don't require letters of recommendation, but private schools will often require that. Um, there will often also often be essay requirements that students have to respond to um, essays. So it's a good idea for them to start looking at the college or the institution's requirements because they can get a sense of what those essays will entail. They don't change very much from year to year. Personal statements generally have the same um, uh, structure as far as what they're looking for. So knowing what that structure is now and starting to consider what they're going to write about now will make for a much less stressful fall uh, when they are seniors. Keep in mind that some of the things that private schools are really seeking to find out more than just a GPA that they can see on a transcript, but they want to know about the attributes of a student. So this is again why we encourage students to be well-rounded. Their involvement in clubs, activities, working, if they work um, outside of you know school and have a job um, or any responsibilities that they have, those are things that help them build certain attributes that you can see here on the screen. And they need to know that that's important. Um, just as important as being a solid um, academic student, they wanna be a good, well-rounded person. Um, schools will often look to see that students take classes beyond the minimum requirements. So again, as they are going to be selecting their courses for senior year, encourage them to move beyond the minimum. Do what's healthy, what's you know emotionally and mental health wise healthy for them, but push. Senior year should not be a time where they feel that they should just kick back because if they are moving forward into the college environment, they need to be college ready. Um, and other factors that some schools will look at is um, a, whether or not a student is a first generation student to attend college and if they are eligible and if uh, are the first in their family to uh, to attend college. Those are some of the, an example of some of the things that are also considered as supplemental criteria for admission. Next slide. One other piece about schools is just, please encourage your, your students to um, start researching so that they can apply broadly. This is just a sampling of some really strong institutions, some great schools that admit more than 50 to 70% of their applicants. Sometimes students and, and families fall into that rut of being drawn to schools that they see on the news or they hear a lot about or that have a certain sports team. And those schools often are very, very selective. Selective doesn't always mean it's the best fit for your child for your student, um, but selective means that they're going to get far more applicants than what they can admit. And that means that some very qualified students will not be admitted to those highly selective schools. So for that reason, our healthiest seniors and our most successful seniors when it comes time for uh, getting their admissions decisions are the ones who really do their research and find good fit schools that aren't discouragingly uh, selective. And so again, this is just a sampling of some institutions that do uh, that do uh, admit students beyond just that really narrow uh, less than 10%. Next slide, please. Okay, so everything that I've talked about, again, I'm going to go back to please, please, please feel free to jump on to that junior information night presentation because again, we've got presenters who can talk directly about each of those things that we've covered, UCs, Cal State, private schools. We also had a presenter who did an excellent job explaining financial aid. So just a little bit about financial aid. Uh, please know that it comes in different forms. That includes grants, loans, and work study, scholarships, um, which is great because of course that is free money, um, institutional aid, which can be need-based or merit-based. And so we say at this phase of the college search or the college process, try not to let the, the, the sticker price of the school deter you because so much is really dependent on your personal family situation. Um, each college has on its website a feature called the net price calculator. I would encourage you when you're looking at schools, um, please seek that out. You can just use the search bar when you're on that college website, uh, type in net price calculator if it's not directly visible or you'll find it on the financial aid uh, tab on most college websites so that you could see what tuition would cost 
uh, roughly by them asking you a few key questions about your income and your family's situation. There are two sites listed here, finaid.com and FastWeb, that will give you links to, again, scholarship and more financial aid information. And again, uh, myintuition.org, myintuition.org, yes. Okay, next slide, please. So we're really excited this year that we will actually be hosting a scholarship event um, sponsored by Sally May. We've been in communication with someone who's very excited to talk to students and parents about scholarships, which again is free money. So that event will again be on a webinar format. It will be hosted at 6.30 p.m. on Monday, March 11th. Please note that on your calendars so that you can log in for that. But we want to give students the tools that they need and the habits that they need um, to make that process not seem overwhelming, but to give them um, skills for seeking scholarships, finding the search engines that will help them, getting their essays ready that they will you know, have to potentially use, and knowing all the steps that they need to uh, be engaged in for scholarship um, information. Okay, next slide. Okay, so we will have a, um, a financial aid night during their senior year. It again is usually hosted in October. Um, so it will probably be anywhere from October to November of next year. But we do something specifically for seniors, uh, financial aid night. But just know these terms, the FAFSA and the Cal Grant. And um, filing for the FAFSA, which is the free application for federal student aid, starts October 1st. It was a bit different this past year. So if you have a current senior, you may know that it was a little odd this year. It's still kind of odd. Um, but again, next year it will be uh, October 1st is the normal filing period. And like I said, there will be a financial aid night with more details um, to, to follow. Um, GPA verification, uh, we as a high school will upload your students' GPA to the state. And so when students are researching and finding out that they need to send their GPA to the state, just know, just a little bit of a, a precursor to what you'll hear in the future is that we as a school will send that on their behalf. Um, and just also be familiar with the term, the CSS profile. There are some private colleges that in addition to the FAFSA, they have their own financial aid form known as the CSS profile. So again, as you are researching different institutions, that's just one thing to be aware of. Look to see what types of documents or forms or applications are required um, for that particular school. So again, I've talked about scholarships already, but I'll just add that FastWeb is a site that we often refer students to um, because it gives them extensive res um, resources for scholarships or grants that are particular to them. And students are often amazed to find out that there is pretty much a scholarship for, for everything. So at one year I had a student who applied for the tall girl scholarship. So when they start re researching, they realize that if they um, start early um, and pace it out, they can find scholarships for all types of attributes and abilities um, that will be things that they want to consider applying for. Um, and again, scholarships are posted in school links and in our daily bulletin and in the CHS Career Center, which is hosted in our library. One thing to be aware of is when you're getting emails or notifications, agencies that ask you to pay a fee for scholarship information, be very leery of that. Scholarship is free money. And so you should not have to pay in order to find out about scholarships. Again, agencies such as Sally May, again, who will be uh, hosting our scholarship event, um, are intended to kind of help you bypass some of the, the scams that might be out there that want you to pay for something that really should be free. So just be aware of that. Next slide, please. One thing I will say, you can stay on this slide, um, is that students who are applying to public schools often think, well, if I'm applying to a Cal State or a UC, I don't need um, a letter of recommendation. But keep in mind that many scholarship applications do require students to have a letter of recommendation. So at this point in time, most of our rising seniors should take it upon themselves to, to know, I will most likely need to request a letter of recommendation, whether it's for my college application or whether it's for scholarship applications. And so this is a bit of information about letters of recommendation. If you are applying to private colleges, know that you will need letters of recommendation. Most private colleges do require that. Um, many private colleges fall under the umbrella of 
um, the common application. And just know that the common application generally means that you will need a letter of recommendation. Uh, letters of recommendation are best to come from teachers that students have in their junior year. So they're current teachers. So we tell them they should be thinking about who they want to ask to write their letter of recommendation. And they should ask, make that uh, informal ask by the end of May. They will more formally ask their teachers in the fall after uh, summer vacation. But usually before the end of the school year, we encourage them to talk to two current teachers that they would like to request. Would you would you mind um, writing a letter of recommendation for me? Because some teachers are extremely popular and they may um, not be able to write letters for all the students that ask. So it's a good idea for students to ask early. And again, UCs and Cal States do not require letters of recommendation. But since students will be applying for scholarships, they should still be prepared uh, to make that ask. We want students to work on the counselor questionnaire over the summer. Those are a series of questions, along with the teacher questionnaire as well, that they will find um, on our CHS website. Um, they will find in school links. But these are questions that really give us more insight about the students. So by answering those questions and being ready to submit their counselor questionnaire in the fall, um, it gives us a better sense of that student overall. And the deadline to make that request of uh, teachers and their counselor is September 23rd, 2024. So we're letting them know now in February, start thinking about letters of recommendation, work on those counselor and teacher questionnaires. So there's no excuse for them to be stressed out on September 22nd saying that they didn't know about this. Okay, so with that, I am going to turn this over to Ms. Sebear, who's going to talk a little bit about admissions testing. All right, uh, just a, one more point, letters of recommendation. Um, again, some colleges are very specific about wanting letters of recommendation from certain subject areas. Um, that's really common, like it's um, Caltech, for example, HM, uh, Harvey Mudd College. So that's something to look at as you're doing your exploration on colleges via either school links or big future or both. Um, the counselor and the teacher letter of recommendation forms are on the CHS counseling website. And again, we just uh, will be reminding students about these um, tasks and projects as we go through fuller into the spring uh, semester. And we do have a series of lunch sessions planned for juniors in April um, to help them get on to, uh, up to speed really for the college uh, piece that's coming up in the fall. One other element um, of getting ready for four-year colleges can be admission tests. There's been a lot of changes uh, nationwide in the admission testing requirements in the last five years. Um, and of course the pandemic made a big impact on admission testing with many colleges going test optional. Currently 70% of US colleges and universities are test optional, which allows students to decide if they wish to submit an admission test score as part of their application. Um, while the UC system and the CSU system are test free, for colleges that are test optional, we are recommending that students closely look at what colleges are looking for from GPA to other um, indexes of student success and consider sitting for an admission test this spring or early fall. That, gives you, that would give students an idea of if they wish to submit their SAT or ACT test later in the admission process, because there is a trend that students with strong admission scores are getting um, admitted at a higher rate than students who don't submit test scores. The SAT and the ACT have a national testing schedule. We have posted the test dates and registration deadlines on the CHS website. And students will need to register for the SAT or the ACT on their own. They don't register for these tests through Claremont High School. When you register by the deadline or even early, you can secure a test location closer to home and pay the normal registration fees, not late penalty fees. The SAT is one test and it's uh, evidence-based reading and writing and a separate portion is mathematics. Um, the scoring scale ranges from 400 to a perfect score of 1600. And starting in the March administration, the SAT is now digital. 
with fewer questions and a shorter time span for testing uh, because it's digital and it's based on, um, it's a smarter uh, smart test. The ACT is a different test. It's comprised of 25% questions are in English uh, grammar usage, 25% is mathematics, 25% is reading, a passage and understanding um, the passage via questions, and then 25% is science. The science questions are largely using logical science principles, not asking students to remember complex um, formulas or uh, molecular weights of certain uh, matter. Uh, there is no penalty for incorrect answers on either test or guessing. Um, the ACT has an optional essay assessment, but currently I'm not aware of any colleges that require the ACT essay. If you are gonna take an admission test, um, please know that Claremont High School's code is known as 050590. Um, most colleges will accept either SAT or ACT if their test is uh, if they are test optional, and some students like to take both tests because they are slightly different, and some students naturally have a stronger uh, score on one test or the other because of the way the tests are comprised. Again, the web the CHS website has information both on registering for the SAT and the ACT, as well as the actual website so that you can register on your own. For students who need fee waivers for this test, please see Mrs. Talamantes, our guidance technician in the office, and she can assist you with fee waivers. And if you're looking to do free test prep, Khan Academy, some of you use it for tutoring. Khan Academy has partnered with College Board to provide excellent free test prep. And we highly encourage that use with Khan Academy if you wanna prep for the SAT. All right, when students are looking at colleges to, um, in the future for the fall, please be aware that you'll learn about terms like early decision, which is a binding decision. It, uh, early decision requires students to submit a single early decision application typically at an early day, historically mid or early November. And if you are admitted under early decision, you have to withdraw other applications and accept or commit to your early decision offer. Early action is different. It's non-binding. Students apply early. They find out early, generally within about an eight-week timeline. But students have the May 1 decision date to commit to the early action offer of admission. Regular decision um, is a process where the deadline is fixed by the institution, but students apply by the uh, application deadline and generally speaking, um, we'll find out anywhere between February and March if they've been admitted and then have until May 1 to commit to their um, application offer. Rolling admissions, some schools don't have um, a deadline to apply and they accept applications on an ongoing or rolling basis, an example of which is the University of Alaska. And then the C California Community Colleges, uh, students can apply for admission in winter or early spring of senior year. The application is online, it's free and admission is guaranteed again, provided that you're a high school graduate, 18 or over. Um, just a reminder for students who are interested in becoming athletes on campus, participating in sports on campus, you need to know about NC2A eligibility, which governs division one and division two schools in the country. The certification for NC2A eligibility begins now in junior year and you can log on to the NC2A Eligibility Center. Um, the eligibility for the NC2A in, uh, includes both athletic eligibility, um, talent, skill, but also the academic uh, part, portion as well. So the NC2A requires that students have a 2.3 GPA in the core curriculum of 16 approved classes for Division One and a 2.2 GPA uh, in the core curriculum for division two athletes. 
We will have an NC2A information night on Tuesday, April 9th. It'll be a webinar. So um, please keep that in mind if um, playing sports in college is of interest to you. We wanna give you more information. Here's an overview of the 16 core courses needed for Division I and Division II of the NC2A. They largely mirror the 15 uh, core courses needed for admission to UCs and Cal States, the A through G requirements, except the NC2A does not count any visual performing or um, music classes at all. They don't count them. Um, but they do want to have 16 core classes, and PE is also not counted. Um, if When your student is interested in playing sports in college, it is a question on the course request form. It was something we went over today in class with your students, and we do want to know that as counselors so that we can make sure those 16 core co classes are on track um, as needed for the NC2A. And the NC2A also has released the admission testing requirements um, that is no longer uh, needed for NC2A eligibility. Um, as we're talking about uh, ways to spend your summer, how to um, learn more about yourself, volunteering is an, always a great um, uh, activity for students. Uh, there are lots of ways to serve, learn more about your skills, collaborate with others, find some meaning. Um, so think about volunteering. We do have information in the office if students want to look at some volunteer options locally. It can also be at school. One fun way is to be active in clubs on campus, start a new club, um, grow in your leadership in different ways. Um, and think about how you can serve your school and community. Volunteering can be a really great resource as you get ready for life after high school, whether it's college or working, because it shows that you know how to work with others, how to develop, how to grow, and how to um, serve on a common goal. Summer ideas. Um, summer school will be offered um, at CHS. We will offer government, econ, and a full year of pre-calculus and chemistry in our summer school. And uh, we will also have summer school classes to remediate low grades in English, math, science, and social science. This year, our summer school will be uh, two 10-day sessions with a 10-day session one beginning June 27th and ending July 12th. And session two will begin July 15th through the 26th. Summer school forms will be available shortly, and we will have that information to share with students when we meet with your juniors between February 22nd and March 6th. Other fun things for your summer might be to go on college tours, uh, actual tours, or virtual, or finding schools that are similar to size and you know type of atmosphere of the schools you might be thinking about, volunteering, maybe getting a part-time job, 10 to 15 hours um, is a good amount of time, um, reasonable. And then if you are offered a job in the summer, you'll need to secure a work permit from the Career Center or the district office if it's summertime. And then other summer ideas, complete the teacher and counselor questionnaire. That way you'll have one less task to do in your busy return to school in the fall when you're a busy, busy senior. Um, lots of times we're asked if students can take coursework outside of Claremont High School. Counselors cannot recommend or advise on such coursework that is outside our district. If you saw our course request form, you'll see that we have so many choices at Claremont High School. Outside coursework, we can't confirm its content, its format or pacing, as well as preparing students for the next uh, course within the regular school year. Um, additionally, outside coursework may not meet graduation, college admission, or NC2A requirements. So we're really not in a position to recommend or advise that. For those of you who are looking at taking IB classes or advanced placement classes next year, keep in mind that both are highly rigorous. They have extensive reading and writing. Uh, both IB and AP classes earn an extra point in the GPA calculation with a C or better. Um, you can check prerequisites in the course description book. 
and students who take IB and AP courses are encouraged, but not required to take their um, corresponding test. AP and IB exams are offered in May. Um, and when you are choosing AP or IB classes, understand that the coursework is challenging. Some courses do have a summer assignment to prepare you for the rigor um, of the courses. And switching to uh, a lower level it will only be possible if space exists. Summer school information should be out shortly um, in the, like the next couple of weeks. And again, we should have that information when we meet with your juniors um, in the next uh, week and a half. Uh, for those of you who are IB diploma students, um, you will be working with your counselor to ensure that you're on track with your IB requests. We discussed that today when we were in classes. Mrs. Evans, the IB coordinator, can also be of assistance. Your counselor, talk to your counselor if you have questions. And um, we're here to help you too at lunchtime. So please do come by at lunchtime if you have questions. We wanna remind students that regional occupation Program classes are offered at Claremont High School. We offer mental and behavioral health, sports medicine, audio production, stage technology, and engineering drawing. These are courses that offer a first and second year level to help get students work ready in a field. Taking ROP classes could be a way to explore a career, explore a new realm, as well as getting ready for work or ready for a major. All of our ROP classes at Claremont High School are UC approved, um, and most of them fulfill the G subject requirement or the F subject requirement, the fine arts requirements such as stage tech and audio production. Students who fulfill two years of an ROP class or career technical education class are recognized at our graduation with a stole, and their accomplishment is also noted on our graduation program. Outside of Claremont High School, other CTE classes are available within the ROP consortium. Mrs. Miller in the Career Center um, in the library can be of additional assistance for those outside classes. Remember that your grades are super important um, in your junior year. It's the last set of grades that colleges see if you're applying to four-year colleges come fall. Um, good And your good academic performance this year and next prepares you for college classes helping you to avoid remedial coursework or delays in your progress towards your bachelor's degree. Um, today, we went in great detail in classrooms explaining the Google form for course selections. The Google form we went through in class is editable. So if your students submitted something today and they learned something in the next week um, or discussions at home, you want to make different selections, you certainly can. The form is editable until next Thursday at 11.59 p.m. We ask that your students make course selections um, as though you are not taking summer school. We will adjust those course selections once we see the summer school completion has happened in August when counselors come back to work. Summer school forms, again, should be available within the next week, week and a half. We will see all our juniors through social science classes between February 22nd and March 5th. During those meetings, we will review um, the senior year requests, your students' credits. Um, we will explore what their goals are after graduation, their college readiness, if that's part of their goal, and their post-graduation plans, as well as summer school. Here's an example of the CHS website. Most of you saw this tonight when you joined the webinar. Um, and as you can see for the class of 2025, um, the dates, today's date, we came to English classes. Tonight is the webinar. The form closes on the 15th. And again, that form can be edited as many times as you wish in the next seven days um, as you talk to teachers, talk to friends, talk to your counselor um, about um, what courses might be best for you next year. And then again, here are, the, um, you can see the dates. Um, and then here's an example of the course contract when you begin it and uh, your students were instructed on how to use this form and most everybody submitted it as a practice. And then um, 
This is an example of the end of the course request form. When you hit the submit button here, it submits it and students again can go back to this course request form and hit this edit your response. And that's where they go back to edit. They wanna change their English class for next year. They wanna amend their math class for next year. This form is editable again for the next seven days until the 15th at 11.59 p.m. We are gonna see your students through social science classes. If your student is in asynchronous U.S. history with Mr. Thomas or doesn't have U.S. history this semester, we will call them in separately, but we will be seeing these classes over the these dates here um, in the next few weeks. So your student will have an opportunity to meet with us counselors to confirm course requests. Um, Ms. A. Barrett, if, I'm sorry to interrupt you. A few slides back when you were showing the screenshot of the um, course selection uh, tab, um, one thing I wanted to point out is it's not visible one before, I think just one more back. There it is. Okay, it's not visible on this slide, but there's another bar that comes under the grad UC requirements. And I think it's called course catalog. Um, one of the questions in the chat was asking about um, um, a 2425 course list. And so our uh, current electives for next year are spelled out in detail under that, under a tab that you can't see it on this slide, but there are, yeah, there are I'm, a few I'm more. afraid so I got clipped, but it is on the website and it's probably, yeah. I think, the second to the last tab. So undergrad, you see requirements and further, you'll see the elective tab, which is the most up to date, I mean, as up to date as this afternoon. Um, there are some new courses that we shared with students today in classes. Uh, we have two new math classes. We have a new dance class. There were some other classes that we shared um, with your students today and they all appear on the course request form. And if it's an elective, it'll also be visible on the electives list. And then we also have a separate um, pull down menu for dual enrollment. Um, our dual enrollment choices are expanding at Claremont High School and dual enrollment classes, just as a reminder, our partner is Citrus College at, at Claremont. So we partner with Citrus College to offer dual enrollment classes at CHS. These are Citrus College classes taught on our campus during our school day, mostly um, by CHS faculty. Uh, dual enrollment classes are great in that students have an opportunity to take a college class while a high school uh, student. The classes are free. The books are provided for free, which doesn't happen in college. And they earned uh, also dual credit. They earn 10 high school credits per semester. They also earn three college units that are transferable to UC and Cal State and possibly private schools as well. And um, those uh, grades for the dual enrollment course are also weighted in the CHS GPA with um, C's or better getting an extra point. Are there any other questions? One of the questions is regarding um, if we know what periods the dual enrollment classes will be held. Um, yes. I'll let you answer that. <laughs> so the Counseling 207, Counseling 120 are zero period classes. English 101 has historically been a zero period synchronous online class. Um, it's one of the few online dual enrollment classes we offer. This year, English 101, because it's very popular, um, we were able to offer both a zero and a seventh period online synchronous English 101, but we cannot be sure if we will have the seventh period option next year for English 101. The remainder of the dual enrollment courses are offered in the school day, largely period one, two, and three. Another question was about, um, it might be being answered right now, about full IB. Uh, does doing IM3 count as an SL? 
Um, for full IB, the IB diploma requires completion of one math course between junior and senior year IB math and taking the corresponding math test. So if your student is full IB, I would anticipate they are in math three as a junior and next year should select IB math AISL as their next math course and then plan to take the math AISL exam in May of 25. If your student has a different situation, urge your student to talk to the counselor. Um, lunchtime we're available and um, some days after school, especially if your student has a zero through five, we're usually available six period, but we do have meetings right after school often. Just once again, there was a question about where to find the tabs they're looking at on this slide. If you go to the CHS website and go to the counseling, and I think it's counseling and uh, career tab, um, that will take you to the counseling page. On the counseling page, you will see each of the, the class of, and you'll click on the class of 2025. And under that, there will be the, uh, the bars that you see where you'll find the description. There will be a bar that I think it's titled course um, uh, course electives or catalog electives. Um, but as Ms. Uh, Abear said, I think it's like the last one in that list of drop downs. So the last one is CHS electives catalog. Electives catalog, that's what I was looking for. And it's the last tab. And when you're looking at the electives catalog and you open that up, then dual enrollment courses appears near the very bottom, which has a listing of the dual enrollment classes that we host at Claremont High. One other question that came in, do you know which IB classes will clash with each other for SL and HL on the same periods? We, um, we understand the tremendous um, responsibility that we have as counselors to ensure that IB diploma students get the right complement of classes. Um, and we understand how important it is to have the right classes for students. We make every effort to make sure that we don't have um, conflicts in classes or we offer enough SL and HL courses to make it work. Uh, we have not, I have not ever seen that be a problem. What sometimes is a problem is if your student is in a lucky position to be an IB diploma student and perhaps wanting to take a, a hybrid, like they're in all IB diploma courses, but they wanna take that one extra AP class, sometimes that is a conflict, but we definitely make sure that our master schedule does not have conflicts with the IB diploma courses for the IB diploma. I think that might be it for our questions. So again, we're looking forward to seeing students um, during their visit uh, with their counselor for senior for their credit check. Um, they know that they can come and see us um, during lunch if they have questions as they're making the selections, and um, and they have until next Thursday for the form to to remain live. Absolutely. Thank you so much for being here tonight. And um, this will be recorded and posted on the website if you wanna to refer to it. And we're also gonna be posting um, a classroom presentation